Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hebrews chapter 9, we're talking about the names of the Holy Spirit, the personal work of the Holy Spirit, His names. We should finish this today. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God, I say God is good all the time. Hallelujah. The, the 24th name of the Holy Ghost is the eternal spirit. The eternal spirit, glory to God, the eternity, deity, and infinite majesty of the Holy Spirit is brought out in this name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14, uh, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit purge your, uh, purge your spirit who offered himself, by the, I'm sorry, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The Holy Ghost is eternal. Now, this is another point here just to talk about the deity of God, of the Holy Ghost. He is eternal. Only God is spoken of in references to eternity. See, man, even, even if man will exist with him uh, everlasting or eternal life, <clears throat> which we receive of him, we'll, we'll, we'll live forever with God, but we did not have an eternal beginning. All right, man has a finite beginning, but God is infinite. God is eternal. He, have, he, he is he who was and is and is to come. Before all that which has been created, all that which is known, God was. Amen? Hallelujah. I remember they came to Jesus and he said, before Abraham was, I am. I love that name. <clears throat> when Moses was sent to Pharaoh, Moses said, who am I supposed to tell them that sent me to you, to Pharaoh? And God said, you tell them that I am, that I am sent you. Now, that's the King James. That's the English translation. The word literally means this. The Hebrew says, I exist because I exist. God just exists. And your peanut brain may not be able to figure out he exists because he exists. He's existed throughout all time and all eternity. Before time, he lives outside the realm of time exist outside the realm of time. So the Holy Ghost is referred refer to as the eternal spirit, clarifying and declaring his eternity, him being God. Amen? Amen? So the, say the Holy Ghost is eternal. He was here before you showed up. He's here while you're here. He'll be here after you're gone. Amen? Before the foundations of the world were laid, the Holy Ghost was there. Before God said, light be, the Holy Ghost was there. Amen? When it said in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, that's what it says in the Hebrew, Elohim. The plurality of majesty in three or more. Elohim means three or more. It doesn't mean one, two. It doesn't mean one God, two God, three God. It means majesty in the plurality of three or more. God existed in the form of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is eternal. Glory to God. Can I say something about that? I mean, he know more than you. I said he knows more than you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, Let's move on from there. That, that's, that's number 24. We're moving to number 25. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and open your Bibles to the 14th, or turn to the 14th chapter of the Gospel of John. John chapter 14. In verse 26. It says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, hallelujah, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Just go over one more chapter, same verse, 1526. But when the comforter is come, hallelujah, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, whom the Father, who proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And then over in chapter 16, verse 7, 
Hallelujah. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Word Comforter. How do you know this? Amen. It's Paraclete. The Greek form, particularly here in these passages, is Parakletos. But Paraclete. The Paraclete. And it means it literally means one called alongside the help. One called alongside. The Holy Ghost is, your, is called alongside you. Amen. He's not called to run over you. He's not called to drag you, and he's not called to push you. He's called to walk alongside of you. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. And so the paraclete, and, and the Amplified Bible, in, in, in um, giving this, the, you know, it says this. Um, it says whole, the paraclete means comforter or counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, standby. And comforter. And the King James translators just picked out the word comforter and put that in there. But you know what? There's times that we need more than comforter. We don't need comfort. We need help. He's our standby. Amen. There's times we need answers. He's our counselor. Amen. There's times we, we, we need prayer from somewhere. He's our intercessor. Amen. And you know, listen, there's times we need him to argue our case before the throne. He's our advocate. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? There's times when we need strength. He's our strengthener. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish he would stop doing that notes <clears throat> hallelujah he is the ever-present one who is always with us jesus said i'll send another comforter one just like i was when i was with my disciples he will meet our every need so that we're properly equipped for service glory to god the holy ghost everybody said the holy ghost has been sent to help me to walk alongside of me glory to god Jesus said, I'll not leave you alone. And when he said, when he was saying, I'll not leave you comfortless, he was not saying, I won't leave you about, oh, in the tough times, you'll just be comforted. He was saying, I'm not going to leave you without the one who comes alongside and gives you counsel and gives you help and intercedes and argues your case and he strengthens you. He's on standby. Brother Hagin used to talk about standby. See, now with these new electronic ignitions, we don't, or electronic fuel injection, carbur we don't have carburetors anymore. It's electronically fuel injected because, because you get, you know, it controls how much gas goes in. There's less waste. Yeah, but you go get an old muscle car guy. He don't want no electronic fuel injection. He wants a carburetor that he can, he can sit there and play with the mix. And he can ramp it up to get more mix or he can turn it down to get less mix. But I'm telling you, they're going to take that carburetor and get that mix. And then they get those, you know, let me go tell you something. You see those cars, race cars, and they got those big things sticking out the top of the hood. And they're going boom, 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 boom. They don't have no electronic fuel injection. Amen. Now, a lot, a lot of the old cars used to have two-barrel carburetors. But then they, they had those with the four barrels. Now, when you're riding down the road and it's flat, you're, you know, and you, got, you, you could be pulling the trailer and you get on flat land and you just got on the road, you know, all you need was uh, just a couple of them just kick in because that's all you needed. But you hit the mountains and those other two kick in. Well, they need more fuel. They need more, they need more power in the engine. So the engine's not using all, all the extra stuff because it, it doesn't need it. But every, every once in a while, you get to a hill and you're pulling something and it needed it, you just kick it right in. See, that what? It was those, two barrels, those two barrels of that carburetor were on standby. And see, when you're going through life, the Holy Ghost is on standby. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So you can be riding down the road and all of a sudden, and of life, and you hit a hill, and, you, and, and, and all of a sudden, there's no lack of power. All of a sudden, boom, the engine just kicks up. What happened? The standby kicked in. I said the standby kicked in. Woo! Glory to God. So Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you without one called alongside. I'm not going to leave you without a counselor. I'm telling you, my, my, my beloved brothers and sisters, the Holy Ghost has wisdom for you. We want to call dial a prophet. How about dial up the Holy Ghost? Amen. How many remember that song? Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want, Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Just call him up, call him up. Tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. <clears throat> That's the best you will get out of me. Amen. Hallelujah. He's our counselor in the hour of, we need counsel. He's our helper in the hour we need help. Look over in Romans chapter uh, 8, I think. Hallelujah. Verse 26. 
Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmities does not mean sicknesses. It means weaknesses, our inabilities, our incapabilities. Amen? He helpeth our infirmities, for we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered or uttered in our articulate speech. Thank God we can pray in tongues. I say, thank God we can pray in tongues. Hallelujah. But likewise, also the Spirit helpeth. Three Greek words make up that word helpeth. And the, the three Greek words literally translated mean, mean this. Um, takes hold together with against. He takes hold with us, together with us, against whatever we're dealing with. Hallelujah. Now, you know, if we, get, we, we don't have anything, really, the piano's not here, so if I'm going to get the piano over here, you're going to take hold together with against the weight of that piano. You're not going to go, you're going to go there and, you know, you could probably go there and grab it in the middle and pick it up, some of you, you know, and, but it wouldn't be a good idea, <clears throat> especially if the, uh, the monitor's sitting on top of it that falls on your foot. That wouldn't help. But somebody come in there, now listen, they come in there and just put their and, and, and lean up against it, and you say, well, let's move the piano, okay, let's go. And you're leaning on it, that's not helping you. Amen? Or, if you say, uh, I say, Nathan, come help me move the piano, buddy. So we get up and we walk over there. And, I, and, and uh, he picks up his end, and I'm just standing there. Well, Dad, don't you want to move? Yeah. That's why I called you over here. I brought you over here to help me move the piano. Let's go. Whoa, whoa. Are you going to pick up your end? No, that's what I brought you over here. See, that's what people think about the Holy Ghost sometimes. We think we bring the Holy Ghost over to do the job. But he takes hold together. Amen? So if I'm going to get Nathan to go help me move the piano over there, hello, then he picks up his end, I pick up my end. And we walk in harmony one with the other. One of us is going to fall down if we don't walk in harmony in step. And we bring it back over here. Now, at the church, I want somebody to go get the piano. Bring it over here. So find somebody to help you. Find somebody that helpeth you. Takes hold together with against it and gets it over here. We just didn't get it back over here yet. All right? Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is your helper. He's not your doer. He's come from heaven, not to do it for you, but to walk along with you in the hour you need help. He's there to help. Right. Amen? Amen? I said, so he takes hold together with us against our weaknesses. We know not how to pray as we ought. Praise God. The Holy Ghost, the counselor. Oh, thank God for wisdom that comes from him. Amen? Amen. Thank God for the wisdom that comes from him. Amen. Heaven. Heaven opens up wisdom from the Holy Ghost. You can tap into it and draw from it and receive from that wisdom. So there's stuff you just ain't bright enough to figure out sometime. Amen. But that's okay. Because when you run up against a wall and can't figure it out, he's there. And he has counsel. He has wisdom that comes out of heaven. There's some stuff you're going to run into in life that you, you just can't figure out how to fix it. Oh, but thank God there's wisdom from heaven. Now, he's not going to do it for you. He's giving you the wisdom on how to get it done. Amen. Glory to God. He intercedes. He's got intercessors. Like I said, Ken, Ken and his wife, Denny, they've been, praying, they've been praying for us for days over there in Estonia. Just spoken to by the Holy Ghost. Pray for Pastor Ed and Janie. Actually, Denny's the one that got in her heart. Several times a day, she's going and praying for us. Then he finally, after 10 days, thought, I need to contact them and find something's going on. I, you know, either just find out that it was God, or sometimes, sometimes you just kind of want to know, something going on? Yes! What is it? You got what you need? Pray! Then he didn't ask what it was. I didn't tell him what it was. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost will intercede. He's your intercessor. He'll move on men and women 
in another country, in another nation, hours by plane to get there. It takes, with layovers, it takes somewhere around 14 hours to end up in Estonia. My first trip over there took me 21 hours with layovers. I only had six hours in Newark. That was back before they redid the airport. You know, then I got to Stockholm in five hours and 30 and, and 45 minute layover. I had over 11 hours in layovers because it's because of the way the, flight, the flights ended up. Hello? You just don't go to Estonia real quick. God knows how to get, get Estonia in seconds, in moments. And while you're here, speak to the people and have them praying for you. The Holy Ghost moving on people, bringing the spirit of intercession, glory to God. The Holy Ghost knows where you are. He knows your phone number. He knows your address. He knows your circumstance. And he knows who to move on to get them to pray for you. Glory to God. I said glory to God. He can awaken them. And the problem thing is, they're so far different now. They're about seven hours different than us. I could be sleeping. They could be praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit is our advocate. He argues in your case and declares and, and pleads on your behalf. Thank God. We have the precious Holy Spirit. We have the precious Holy Ghost. We have the one who's called alongside. Amen. He's not called alongside to hang out. Honestly. <laughs> He didn't come to hang out. He didn't come for afternoon tea. Are you here? He's not, he didn't come for, for uh, Parker's barbecue, Pastor Ed's version of Parker's barbecue and some coleslaw. He came alongside to be, to be there. Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you without the counselor. I'm not going to leave you without the intercessor. I'm not going to leave you without the advocate. I'm not going to leave you without the strengthener. I'm not going to leave you without the standby. I'm not going to leave you without the comforter. I'm not going to leave you without your helper. When he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless, he said, I'm not going to leave you without these aspects of, of, of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send someone just like me. Hallelujah. I'm going to send another just like myself. Except he won't be limited by a flesh and bone body or a flesh and blood body. He'll be able to be everywhere all at once, all through all the whole earth. And the entire church at any moment in time can have the comfort or the help or the strength or the advocate, the standby, the, the counselor, uh, the, the intercessor, the, the, uh, the, um, the comforter, all working on them in different aspects, anywhere in the world, at any time, he's there. Oh, God, I need your help. We got the helper. Hallelujah. It's called the Holy Ghost. Jesus said the comforter, whom is the ho who, who is the Holy Ghost? He said the comforter, who is the spirit of truth? Amen. It's there. Lord, I need some strength, and the strength that is already here. As a matter of fact, we begin to cry out for strength. We begin to cry out for advocacy. We begin to cry out for help. Hallelujah. And, and or for counsel. And all of a sudden, from on the inside of you rises up something that the Word of God says in 1 John. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's already there. You don't have to go fetch him. You don't have to wait for him to show up. Well, they tarried, yeah. They tarried until the day of Pentecost. He showed up. He ain't left. He's here. He's already at work. John says he's on the inside of you. Glory to God. We can look to the, look to the greater one on the inside. Say, I need help. Oh, I'm right here. Let's get with it. Hallelujah. I need strength. So you got strength now. Let's go for the journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you're in the journey, and all of a sudden you hit the mountain and the standby. He's already, on, he's already there. I said he's already there. Hallelujah. I mean, your, your little motor starts going, chick, 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 and all of a sudden you hear something going, chick, 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 
and it ain't I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. It's that I know I can, I know I can, I know I can. Why? Because the greater one's on the inside. He was on standby. He was just waiting for the opportunity to show up and do what he does. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I won't leave you without the standby. Hallelujah. Oh, I know, Lord, I got you. We, we, we do in church sometimes. Help, help, help me, Lord. You already got the helper. Amen. 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 Are you here? Amen. Jesus, thank you for your word. I'm in an hour I need help, and the Holy Ghost says, here I am. I mean, you know, you just go in there and just, just go to the phone booth and rip it open. And it says, HG, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He's already on the inside. He's already, I mean, you know, Superman just had to disguise. The Holy Ghost isn't there to disguise. He's there to work. He's there to do all these things in your life, praise God. And you don't have to wonder where he is. He's already on you, in you, not just on you, but in you. See, we keep waiting for the Holy Ghost goosebumps in church. We wait for the service where well, some guy, whoo, that felt good. But I'm telling you right now, he works whether you feel it or not. What did I say about the other night? I'm up here, everybody's got there praying. I'm thinking, my God, ain't nothing happening. These aren't spiritually dead, spiritually out of tune, or these people need some prayer work. Your brain's just kind of doing all kinds of stuff. But see, it ain't what you feel. I said, it's not what you feel. If you'd ask, if you go out there in the middle of that and say, how do you feel, Pastor, like I did when I got up here? <laughs> Except when they put this in my hand and walked away. And Joe, Joe kind of hung around, but kind of, kind of left me standing. I think, I guess some other people still, I just don't remember. I had to go back and look at the pictures. And I started talking. And I realized, this ain't coming out right. I want what you feel. See, your feelings will fool you. Your feelings will tell you you're You're helpless. Your circumstances say you don't have any strength for the journey. Are you here? The circumstances say you're all alone. There's, no, no, there's nothing on standby. There's no reserve for you. See, that's what standby is. There's a reserve. There's a reserve for you. Hallelujah. Your mind is being battered with stuff. And you, there's no answers. The devil's telling you. Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be that say there's no help for him in God. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me, the glory and the lifter of my head. The enemy will say all kinds of stuff. In the anguish, and he'll say, there's no comfort for you. But God, through his son, the master, who would walk with them for three and a half years, and when there was need for help, he was there. When there was need for strength, there was there. When there was need for an advocate or an intercessor, he was there. When they needed counsel, he was there. Whatever they had need of, he was there. And he looked at them in that hour. They were, he, could, he knew on the faces of them that there was anguish coming because he was telling them he was leaving. And, he, and then he even said this. He said, it's, it's, it's expedient for you that I go away. Because if I don't go away, the comforter can't come. The paracolitos won't come. But he's going to come. I said he's going to come. And he's not going to be with you. Jesus went on and said, he said, he's not just going to be with you. He's going to be in you. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. So you get in that moment in time and you, you face those circumstances of life and the devil unleashes all of hell against you. Remember, remember Paul wrote to the church at Ephesus and said this. He said, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand when? In the evil day. He didn't say, well, withstand. Maybe, you know, if you don't have enough faith, an evil day is going to show up, so be ready. And he said, put on the whole armor so you can stand in the evil. It's coming. I said, it's coming. 
You can't confess it away. You can't deny it. You can't say, there's no such thing as an evil day in my life. Then why did God send the armor of God and tell you, put it on so you can be ready when it shows up? Not if it shows up, when it shows up. It's coming. Why? Because we live in a fallen world. And Satan's the God of this world. And we're called to win the battles against him. Fight the good fight of faith. I remember the first time I ever heard Brother Cope on the radio. I didn't even know who he was. He said, a lot of Christians will get to heaven. They're going to come clamoring in. They're going, I got my armor. Where's the devil? They're ready to fight him. And, and somebody's going to look at him and say, he ain't here. You should be using that down there. Got taken out early because they weren't using it. Hallelujah. What does the Holy Ghost help us do? We read it in Romans 8. He helps us pray. He helps us pray because we don't know how to pray as we are. He helps us study the word. Remember, he's the spirit of what? He's the spirit of truth. I can tell you, I've heard people preach who don't have the spirit of truth on them. They've given over to the wrong spirit, and it's not the spirit of truth. Y'all hear you go home. It's, it's, it's a different devil on them. It's, it's not the Holy Ghost. It's a different ghost. Are you here? John 16, look at there. I want to preach, preach, but I'm not, I can't get there. I'm trying, but I can't get there. He won't let me, I, the, the, he won't let me get there. He's, hold, he's holding me back. John 16, 12. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Now listen, think about that. Listen to Jesus. There are things I want to teach you right now, but you can't handle it. Yeah. And of course, you're probably th sitting there thinking, Give me a shot. Lay it on me. I want to hear it. He says, you can't handle it right now. He said, you can't bear it right now. Amen? What did he say? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and show you, show it unto you. Hallelujah. Think about that now. Jesus is about to cut out and leave, and he's telling I got stuff I need to share with you, but I'm not going to give it to you now. Now, when the Holy Ghost gets here, he'll tell you what I wanted to say to you. He'll teach you from the Word. See, there are things they couldn't handle. If, if he had told them that when he went to the cross, died, was raised from the dead, went up to heaven, sat down, that when the Spirit of God came, and when they confessed him as Lord, they would be born again, and, and, and what that really meant. See, Jesus told Nicodemus that, but they didn't have a clue what that meant. He said, you're going to be born again. You're going to pass from death unto life. I'll be the first one raised from, I'll be the first one born from the dead. And then everybody comes after me, going to get the same thing. And they're, going to, and they're going to be transformed from the spiritual dead men to spiritual alive men. The life of God's going to be in them. They're going to be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. They're going to be a new man, glory to God. They couldn't handle that. I mean, right up to the end, they're thinking, man, we're going to have the kingdom restored here and cutting people's ears off. They weren't ready for it. But the Holy Ghost was sent so that when you open up the scriptures, just like when Jesus was on the road with the disciples after his resurrection, and they, and he, and they, uh, they were saying some things, and he, he began at Moses and the prophets and went and, expand, and showed them that the Christ, who the Christ was. Did our hearts not burn within us? The Holy Ghost has come to unveil the, the revelation of God's word to you. He's the teacher. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. The counsel you need will come out of his word. He stands with it. Listen, look at Acts 8, 29. What else does he do? He will help you do the work of God. As a matter of fact, if he's not involved, throw it in the track and get rid of it. Stop doing it. We don't need another good idea in the body of Christ. Are you here? We do not need another good idea in the body of Christ. We need God ideas. We need things breathed out of the realm of the Spirit that the Spirit of God speaks to us. And we walk out. <clears throat> we don't need another bozo coming up with something that sounds good and everybody jumps on it and five years later they find that was stupid. Hello. Oh, that's great. That's a great idea. Oh, man, that's because, listen, I, stop 
enjoying listening to your jaws flap. And get along with God. And let the Holy Ghost breathe. And let the Holy Ghost speak. And what happens? Verse 29, chapter 8. Chapter eight. Then the Spirit said to Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. Now, remember, Philip had been up in, in, in Samaria and had a citywide revival going on. I mean, they had miracle signs and wonders taking place. And then they sent Peter and John to get him filled with the Holy Ghost for he was yet falling on none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I know I said that real fast. I could back it up and say this way. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. And people were giving heed to him, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. When, when the disciples at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, might lay hands on them that they might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen on none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What does that mean? They were saved. When Peter and John got down there, they got them baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can say all day long that it's the same thing. It can't be the same thing. If they had received the word of God, they'd been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and the disciples in Jerusalem sent Peter and John down there to lay hands on them to get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Can't be the same thing. Well, Peter and John get down there and start getting people filled with the Holy Ghost, and God tells Philip to leave the citywide revival. He's out running around, and the Holy the Spirit of God speaks to him and says, go join yourself to that chariot. It, uh, Ethiopian eunuch was out there, and, uh, read, and he joined himself to him. saw he was reading the scriptures, began to talk to him. He was reading out of Isaiah. And, uh, or, uh, huh? Isaiah? Yeah, Isaiah. Isaiah. And preached to him, water baptizing, came up out of the water. Philip got the first, got, it was Scott, he got his first guy. Philip got translocated 30 miles away. Came up out of the water. And you know what? Here's the cool thing. The guy that got water baptized that came up out of the water didn't even bother him. He just got up and went on his way. Probably like this. Wow! Glory to God. The Spirit of God helps us in the work of God. We go out and we do, and then he'll direct as we do. He'll speak as we do. Now, notice Philip wasn't sitting back in the house waiting for somebody to get a, get a revelation for God of where to go and what to do. He was out doing, going, in obedience to God. And then the Spirit of God said, go do this. You can't steer a parked car. Now, you can sit there and turn it all day long, and you'll wear your tires out, but you won't steer. It won't go anywhere. He'll help us preach and teach. 1 Corinthians 2. Anybody blessed? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I am telling you, we don't need any more cool sermons. We don't need another eloquence of mental capacity we don't need another person who can has great oratory skills to expo, expound on the revelation from the word of god that they don't have but they've painted a pretty sermon we need men and women who preach and teach under the power of the holy ghost anointing of the spirit of god so that their faith will not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. <clears throat> so that when the, when, the, when the word of God is preached, it pierces into their very core because of the anointing of God and manifestation and demonstration. Not moved. I love preaching. I even like hooping. All right? 
But if it's emotional and it's not spiritual, we don't need it. We don't need teaching that's just educational. We need not orators, but obedient ones who come not to wow the crowd with their style and their skinny jeans and bedhead. With their productions of preaching. With all the fancy, and I'm not against technology, but you know, when, when, we, when we get to the point where we're using the technology instead of the anointing, there's a problem. I kind of think our platform looks cool. We just redid it. But you know what? There ain't a, there's not a pallet board up there that'll save you. There's not an LED light up there that'll cast the devil out of you. Are you here? We don't have a smoke machine. Well, if we did, there's not a smoke machine on the planet that can replace the glory of God. Are you here? Paul said, I did not come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. The paraclete has come. And he comes to aid us to preach and to teach the word of God so that it transforms men and women. So as they sit in the presence of that word, revelation comes and understanding comes. And what you do with it is your business, but it still comes. It liberates the captive from carnality, from a mind void of judgment, transformative power of the Holy Ghost turning you into men and women of faith and power. Hallelujah. Why? Because we trust the Holy Ghost. We don't trust our antics. We don't trust our productions. We don't trust. We trust the Holy Ghost. Well, if you do this, 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 you'll get people to come. How about if we just get the Holy Ghost on everything and let, and let them come? And let, I I don't need 5,000 people with 4,990 of them are still bound. Nobody does. We're going to have 5,000. Let's have 5,000 free men and women. Let's have the anointing that liberates us and sets us free and turns them into soul winners that go out into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in and make disciples of them and train them up in the things of God and turn them into men and women full of faith in the Holy Ghost and then turn that crowd loose on the world. Instead of coming to church and say, my pastor has a relevant message. I got a Holy Ghost. I want a Holy Ghost message, not a relevant one. And let me say this to everybody who tries to use cool terms. If it's the Holy Ghost, it will be relevant. See, what we mean by that is it's culturally relevant. It works into the scheme of how people want things today. Let me tell you a couple things. Number one, the Holy Ghost is not interested in how you want things today. I disagree with that. Well, I don't give a rip. He's interested in you being like Jesus. And Jesus was, what well, Jesus ate with the publicans and sinners, and he ate with them in his priestly robes. He didn't have a rat tail, and he didn't have gauges, and he wasn't tatted up. Now, if, you got, if all that's happened, you've done that, God loves you. He still loves you. But you, ministers don't go out and do all this stuff so you can relate. Jesus went in the power. Remember, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. And he goes on to list all the things he was anointed to do. Bind up the broken heart, heal the sick, set the captives free, declare the year of Jubilee. And he did it. His, his clothing was such, because they called him Rabboni. He wore teacher's garments. And they were so pricely, they cast lots to get the robe he wore. He wasn't in, he wasn't in Peter's fishing outfit. He ate with the publicans and sinners because he went to carry the message to them, but he didn't act like the publicans and sinners. He brought them the anointing. 
See, we're trying to outlight the center to get them to come join us so we can get the back ends in the seats and so we can say we got a successful ministry. Uh, well, yeah, but when you get the back ends in the seat, is there anything there to deliver their back end from the stuff they're going through? Or are you trusting the Holy Ghost that when they walk in that door, whatever they're bound with, whatever's going on in their life, whatever they've been su suffering through, that you've got something to give. Paul said that. He said, I did not come to you trying to be slick. And if anybody could be eloquent of speech, anybody could be slick, and anybody had the education to do everything by, by an oratory standard, it was Paul. He was the most educated man of his day. He studied at the feet of the greatest philosophers of his day. He knew the law better than anybody else of his day. And he said, I did not come with any of that. I came in the demonstration of the spirit and the power. Why? Because your faith has to rest in something greater than my ability to woo you and to wow you. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you today, the Holy Ghost has come to your life. You may have friends and loved, and loved ones that are unsaved and don't know Jesus, and you don't know what to do to get through to them. Just speak in the power of the Spirit. Just walk in the anointing, walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. It'll get on them. I said it'll get on them. They may not respond right then. That's all right. It'll get on them. And Sandy has been trying to get Donnie filled with the Holy Ghost for two years. We've preached about the Holy Ghost over in Winston. Talked about being filled with the Holy Ghost. Gave, you know, went through the scriptures. Anybody want to get filled with the Holy Ghost? He just look at you, smile. You're thinking, are you going to get up and come down here and get filled with the Holy Ghost or not? No. That's okay. Because in the right season, what you, when you give it by the Spirit, it, it, you know, it, it, God will get you. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Sand sitting there with I'm looking over there going. And she's like, she's, and I can't even get her attention to say, he got it. She's, she's busy looking through, trying to look through all the ushers. We had the usher brigade up here. Hallelujah. You know? And I'm going. And she's never got her attention. Somebody got, finally got her attention. He finally, you know, she finally figured out. He got filled with the Holy Ghost. But you got to keep just sharing the truth and let, let the anointing hit people. And it'll work. It'll, it'll, it'll talk to them in the night. It'll talk to them when you walk away. It'll talk to them when they're in the car. Amen. I remember when, when um, well, it's, 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 10, it's 11 10 in Tulsa. It is. And pastors just got going out there pretty good right now. So <coughs> we're going to go with Pastor Hagen right now. But I remember when I worked in the restaurant in Greenville, and I, you know, and I got out of Raymond, and I came back home, and I didn't, have, you know, and, and I couldn't find a job, you know, in doing programming. Well, I could, but I, I wouldn't, pro, I wouldn't work on nights and weekends. Why? Well, if you're called to the ministry, it's hard to work nights and weekends and, and stay focused. You're never in church, and that was the only programming jobs available were nights and weekends. Well, I'm not doing it, so I just, I just went back to the restaurant and cooked chickens. But I would preach to those people in that kitchen, and I'd preach to them. They'd ask me questions, and I'd preach to them. They'd disagree with me, and I'd just preach to them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I wasn't cute, and I wasn't fan. I'd just share what Jesus said. I'd share what the Scripture said. And then one day, one of them came and said, Brother, I got saved last night. Glory to God. Let's have church. We had a revival in that restaurant. I'm telling you, every time I turn around, one of those girls was getting saved. Praying for them, cancer disappearing. Now, let me give you a follow-up story 30 years later. Went down to Greenville uh, last fall to get the, the cottonseed oil and the corn sticks for our cookout. And Billy, now Billy was this tall, no-neck, little chubby kid. He was the owner's son. Grandson and son of the owners. And the grandfather and the son ran it. Now, the, 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 the dad and the grandson run it. Mr. Parker's passed away. And the elder Mr. Parker. Mr. Parker was still there years after I left. But I went back. And we went to get the cotton seed oil and the corn sticks. And I walked around the restaurant looking at it. And Billy said, I want, I want to introduce you to somebody. And this guy, he said, they started to introduce me to this guy. And he's like what they call a corporate chaplain. 
every Thursday night, they take all the chairs down in one end of the restaurant and all the tables out and set up. And they have church. They've had 60 people saved in two years at that restaurant. And I, I, I believe there was a residual of the anointing of what was there when I was back preaching all the time in the kitchen, you know, just, just sharing the truth and praying for the girls in there getting cancer and having problems and getting sick. And all. I, I just believe that there was, a, there was a, a, a deposit of the Holy Ghost that God has brought forth now. Sixty people in two years have been saved coming out to the Thursday night church services in the restaurant with their corporate chaplain. He was so excited about it. <laughs> Well, good. Praise God. I was excited with him. I said, I was excited with him. And so then that guy's kind of their pastor. He comes in there because they're working. He, 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 they come in on Thursday nights, and they pastor him and, and, and get people saved and just share the truth. I thank God. See, so when you come with enticing, not enticing, but enticing words of man's wisdom and the demonstration of the, when you come with not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, their faith doesn't rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. You've got it. That same Holy Ghost is on you. That same spirit of power that was on Paul is on you. Ah, there's not a different Holy Ghost. He's the same Holy Ghost. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.